Right. Christmas Carol goes wrong. Haven't watched this for so long. Can't remember much of it. Let's see if I've got anything interesting to say while we do this. Christmas Carol goes wrong a lot. There was not a man, woman, or child in London who chose to walk close to Scrooge in the street. But as long as he was able to go about his business with thrift and count his coins, what did Scrooge care? Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Ha-ha! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I handled the door better than a different character. I think that's the only time. Ha-ha-ha! <laughs> oh, I see. Shields must have been so annoyed that he looked the fool there, and I didn't. That's why I'm always struggling with doors now. Ah, I see. The whole kind of section with Dennis reading off stuff, we wanted to make sure that constantly developed. At the end of the office, there's three really fun jokes. There's the, the straw warts thing, which was great because it was so, it was so hard to, to, to work out how to film that because you had to see the word warts. You had to, obviously we had to kind of, in the writing room, work out, you know, what could he say that he can read backwards. But then also, you know, kind of framing the words, the words so you could see it being changed. Um, so you had that, and then you had two extra little buttons to pay it off. You had the crazy surreal glasses that say, bless you on. That, of course, if Dennis is reading them from within, say, oi, self! <laughs> And everyone, I remember, when we were rehearsing that, like, everyone doubted that, one, that that was funny, but everyone doubted that that's what it would sound like if someone did say, bless you, backwards. So, I ch and, it, and it does. I challenge you all, record yourself saying, bless you. Maybe do it in slow motion and then play it on backwards on your phone and you'll hear, oi, selb. And then, of course, it finishes with wang, which is just, again, just very funny. I'm very silly. But be here all the earlier the next morning. Wang! <laughs> One of my favourite jokes in the whole of this episode, actually, with this special, is Jacob Marley being revealed in Scrooge's quarters after playing the door knocker. Scrooge, shaken by the vision, went to search the rooms of his house for signs of an intruder. So my Jacob Marley costume and look, there was a few days when we were meant to get to this scene. So I got dressed up, full makeup, wig, everything. Took a very long time. Didn't get to my scene. Wasn't enough time. It happened about three days, I think, in a row. So he kept coming in like day after day, really early before anyone. He'd get all this crazy makeup and costume put on. He couldn't really move in it and he couldn't sweat. So he was kept like, really cool and he had to keep really still. And he'd wait all day and he kept being brought onto set and, we, and we'd be like, no, Greg, I'm sorry, we're not there yet. And then every day he wouldn't be used. <laughs> he'd come down in his full full Jacob Marley stuff and just be dismissed and I think that went on for four days and it was just, I don't know, it's probably one of my fondest memories of filming this whole special. Just Greg's, just Greg being messed about, just being put in the costume and then having to go home and get up so early to be Jacob Marley again. Christmas present. Ghost costume is just incredible. Dave's costume as the ghost is just excellent. And this shot just shows the set is amazing, but we literally built in the studio. So usually we just kind of do an end on performance where we have a set and an audience bank. And with this episode, which now looking back, maybe wasn't, wasn't necessary, um, we built an entire village, essentially. So like, you've got all the sets, so Scrooge's house and the shop and the Cratchit's house, 
and you can go inside them and all that kind of stuff. But you also had just all the cobbled streets and stuff and all the snow. You could literally walk around it. It was absolutely unbelievable. Like it looked amazing. And I think what I really like about that is just that it was far too good for Colney. And I kind of always, we've always said that's how the set should be. They, they you know, the cast should also almost be intimidated by how good the props and the furniture are so that it kind of makes them become even worse and makes them make mistakes just because they're, you know, they're living up to this set that they can't really, they can't really fill. I think my favourite scene to film in Christmas Carol Goes Wrong is the scene where Sandra and Dennis are Mr and Mrs Cratchit and Dennis doesn't know any of his lines and he's reading them all around the set. I've had the children clean up before we eat. What will we be having for Christmas dinner, Bob? <laughs> Bob? <laughs> A goose! That I just had so much fun getting to be the sort of normal person in that scene, surrounded by m mad people, and Jonathan's so funny, and then we really tightly choreographed this thing with the wine, and I loved, like, having to panic and like find everything and, and kind of fix the problem really quickly and then you think oh, okay Sandra's like fixed the problem it's going to be fine then in walks Robert played by Henry Lewis and you just think oh my gosh oh Tim you do look frail of late I am frail <laughs> frail and ill a chill I sell <laughs> that was so much fun to rehearse and like Henry Lewis like sitting on me and I'm doing acting he's not hurting me at all uh, but yeah, I really, really loved doing that scene. That was one of my favourites. Oh, I wish we did get to see him attempt to get in that tiny chair. You know, just one tape, destroy the chair. Why not? <laughs> Robert as the ghost. He's very, very funny. He didn't really get this costume until like the, the second before we managed to film it. Um, it was, it's just so funny because it's just all real, really. Like, you can't see a thing. You just couldn't see anything. So a lot of the falling about and stuff is, is you know, at least semi-real. I believe it was genuinely very <laughs> difficult for Henry to move that weird puppet thing around. And you kind of lose where Henry ends and begins and and kind of where the ghost ends and begins and where the costume is, it's, it, it, it's very funny. And it's just a really, you know, again, just a really good example of where it's the team behind the scenes that kind of makes so many of these funny moments really shine. Oh, my poor Tim. Be at peace, my dear sweet boy. <laughs> <laughs> Just so lucky we got to work with the legend Derek Jacobi and Diana Rigg. In the two Christmas specials with Peter Pan and Christmas Carol, we've tried to rope in a, a kind of actor of tremendous calibre. And I have to say, Derek Jacobi bursting out of the small coffin is one of the most surreal things I've ever seen because he really had to fit in there and he really had to burst out and the silence that was on set as we as we kind of loaded this kind of national treasure into this coffin for him to explode was incredible and, and it was very it was very surreal because we actually only had Derek Jacobi with us for a day so all of his filming had to be done at kind of breakneck pace, um, slightly out of order, and and he was just a he was just a machine. He just he just didn't stop, and he, he was just incredible, and he was very very funny and a lovely man. <laughs> Why does Trevor take the camera? Mr. Lee actually said quack in that shot. I had to dub over it because he said quack instead of quick. Quack! Grab the camera! <laughs> Filming all this stuff outside, I think it actually was genuinely freezing. 
oh, it was so cold. And we, and, and we just kept having to do it again and again. And none of us could remember the song that we were doing. And then, yeah, we went into the shop. <laughs> oh, God, I forgot we did this whole thing in the shop. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to run Ah, no goose then. But very well, Bob Cratchit. If this is what you desire most, then it is what you shall have. For everyone at Christmas loves goujons. <laughs> <laughs> nearly corpsed every time we did the goujons bit. I think you can just about see. Keep it together. What we quite liked about the story of. A Christmas Carol and giving it a kind of goes wrong spin was the idea that when the con the characters go into the real world that is during kind of Ebenezer Scrooge's redemption so he's full of Christmas cheer and Christmas spirit and then he's up against this this shopkeeper who's just totally kind of he's just totally miserable and unhappy and we thought that was a fun thing as well i appear to have left my coin purse in my other britches <laughs> and if i don't have any money i'll have to leave might you be able to open your heart to those in need at christmas no, i'm sorry mate <laughs> please it's for the cratchits who please we need them i just take whatever you want take the money it's fine that is matt cavendish another fantastic mischief member from what I remember, Matt Cavendish, who's um, who we work with quite a bit, who's playing the kind of grumpy store owner with the hat on, was actually also operating the shop at one point because someone came in to buy some magazines and and um, and a packet of Haribo, and we didn't want to do the guy whose shop it actually was out of business. So I think we we did serve him. From what I remember. <laughs> you'll see on the reception desk is Bryony Corrigan um, who of course later when we when we got the series became Vanessa so again just a, ni a nice little a nice little bit of history there I wonder if we actually tried to take over a BBC studio like this how long would we get away with it before we were arrested or just cut off probably like 10 seconds and so as Tiny Tim observed. Please, God bless us. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> hey. Merry Christmas. Wasn't that good? Yeah.